Today we've got some pretty interesting mods for the RX 5700 series and it's Prime Day. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. So the RX 5700 and 5700 XT have been out for a little over a week, and a lot of reviewers have tried overclocking them using AMD's utilities with limited success. The main issue being the drivers either being broken or just straight up limiting overclocking for product segmentation. AMD doesn't want you to buy an RX 5700 just to overclock it to match a stock RX 5700 XT. Well, things have sort of changed, especially for the RX 5700. Tom's Hardware Germany has recently published an article on the SPPT mod or Soft Power Play Table mod. Now before I start getting into it, please note that this is a dangerous mod. The reference blower design is not suitable for it and neither will be a lot of third party designs. You could easily damage your GPU permanently doing this. All right. So the way it works is actually pretty interesting. A GPU needs to know what limits it has. It could be the max clock speed, the voltages, or the power limit. It's just like a CPU. In the case of a CPU, you have a BIOS chip that keeps this information. That's what you modify when you overclock. Every time you boot up your computer, your BIOS sets up all of those settings and then you're off into Windows, or Linux if that's what you have. In the case of a Navi GPU though, the first time the card is recognized in Windows, those settings and limits that are in the GPU BIOS chip get copied and transferred into Windows registries. That's what is called the power play table. That means that after this first boot on Windows with the card installed, it stops checking the GPU BIOS for its limits and just keeps on checking on that power play table that has been copied into Windows. With a little elbow grease though, you can modify that power play table to essentially break through those limits. And that's exactly what Igor from Tom's Hardware Germany did with the help of Hell M. In the case of the RX 5700, the boost clock is set at 1725 MHz, but the actual overclock limit is set at 1850 MHz. With the soft power play table mod though, that number skyrockets to a max clock of 2100 MHz. That's an increase of almost 18% over the original boost clock of 1725 MHz and 13.5 5% over the 1850 megahertz overclock limit. That's a pretty big jump in performance for a GPU. In the case of the 5700 XT, the original boost clock is at 1905 megahertz, and using the power play table mod, the gains could potentially be even bigger with a max clock speed of 2300 megahertz. That's 20.5% faster than the original boost clock. I say potentially because Igor was only able to reach 2.2 gigahertz and some change, which is still a staggering 15.5% increase. Once again, this mod is not suited for blower style coolers and even Tom's hardware puts a big red warning letting you know that you could quickly reach thermal limits and cause irreparable damage to your GPU. In fact, the power limit used for Igor's 5700 XT was plus 95%. Igor goes as far as to say that this is not suitable for a daily rig. It might work right now, but who knows how long it will last. All right, so we've talked a lot about power, but how about performance? Well, the only benchmark that was shown is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and let me tell you that modded 5700 XT got some work done. It easily beat the stock 2070 Super and nestled itself right under the 2080 Founders Edition in average frame rates, and in 99 percentile FPS, it actually beats the 2080. No wonder AMD killed off the Radeon 7. In case you were wondering, it also surpassed the 2070 Super with a power limit mod and its max overclock. Even the frame time were quite all right. Now, if you plan on getting an RX 5700 or 5700 XT, I'd wait to see if others are willing to do the mod first and stick to it for the next year or so. Then, if their cards are still alive, you could upgrade your cooling solution and do the mod instead of buying a new GPU. It might cost you less and you might get enough performance to be happy with it. And for the last time, please don't do this to your GPU if you don't know what you're doing. Moving on, as some of you might know, it is Prime Day, so here are some of the discounts that you might like. In the US, if you're looking for a sub $1,000 gaming laptop, 
Here is the Acer Predator Helios 300 with a 1660 Ti and a 6-core Intel CPU. Looking for something cheaper? The same model is $100 less if you're willing to go down to a GTX 1060 instead. Even cheaper, there's the Asus FX504, but you're stepping down to a 1050 Ti at 749. For my homies here in Canada, and for a good gaming experience, this Asus laptop is absolutely insane in terms of specs, and it comes in at $1399 with a 1060. Then there's this beast from Acer at a reasonable $1199 with a 1650, and if you really wanted to go sub 1000 with a great gaming experience if you're willing to sacrifice on quality settings, this Asus FX505 is $849 and comes with a 120Hz display. All of the links are in the description and they are affiliate links so if you plan on using them it would support me and this channel immensely anyways guys that is pretty much it for the news as usual click or tap right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe stay frosty my dudes and i'll see you on the next one i do have to admit the mod is pretty cool and it gives a lot of power to the rx 5700 series but i just wouldn't do it because too much power